Happy Monday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Hollywood Squares. I'm your host, Pete Pardo. Today, we've got Ryan Scow. Everybody wave when I call your name. Ryan Scow, Nicholas Franco, Chris Allo, down the lower square. This is Sea of Tranquility, another edition of your rant series and part two of great albums with really terrible album covers. So just like we did last week, uh, I've asked the guys to pick some albums that they really dig a lot, but had some pretty atrocious album covers. So I think we started, I don't remember who we started with. Nick, you're gonna go first today. We're gonna go Nick, Chris, Ryan, and then myself. We'll do it that order today. Just to, right. keep, it, just to keep it a little Sounds fresh, good. you know? Sounds good. How is everybody? Good, good. Uh, so my, <laughs> my first one, um, I realized that I'm treading on uh, sacred territory with the artist, okay? And I'm going to say that the artist is Storm Thurgerson, okay, who's basically immortal in the rock world. But I, I've, never, I've never gotten this cover, and I'm sure everyone is going to have an opinion one way or the other. But um, I'm going to say that Scorpion's Love Drive is something I just did not like. I don't like this cover. I got to disagree with you there, Nick. I like I that cover. I anticipate a lot of disagreement, and that's okay. But why do you love that cover? Because um, the first time I saw it, I was a kid, and I was like, holy cow, there's like a naked lady on an album cover. This is awesome. <laughs> well, a funny thing about it. Well, yeah, no. I, you know, because the other thing I like about it, too, is on the, the back album cover, you actually get, her, you know, the naked shot of the two of them laughing in the back of the car. I mean, when I was a kid, it didn't take a lot to get me titillated. I thought this was cool. It was so it was so taboo. I didn't even know the Scorpions, but I'm like, I, I got to listen to this somehow. Yeah, I just to me, I don't understand why there would be gum on someone's boob. Anyway, I just I guess I was too practical looking at it. Um, you can't think like that because what about animal magnetism and all the other crazy? What about I don't want to say Virgin Killer, but all, all the other crazy Scorpions album covers. Virgin Killer to come up. Yeah, no, listen, they have great covers. I don't think any of us actually wants to show that on no, the air, right? No, no. <laughs> I didn't get that one. But, you know, it's funny that they received a lot of uh, flack for that album cover in the U.S. And Klaus uh, Mina, uh, he said in one interview that um, America is the only country where women flash their boobs at us. So he's like, we didn't think this album would, do, would ha cause a stir in the United States. But you know how sensitive people here can be. But I just, I don't know, I just... Aesthetically, it just didn't do it for me. It's weird. And you know what I don't understand about that album cover? It's not very metal. No, not at all. True. I mean, you can right. see the same. Like I said, animal magnetism is just that's a not really weird metal either. Yeah. Sexual connotation thing, but it's it, weird. It's very, and as a, you know, as a kid, but, I was like making me laugh. And yeah, I could do it out the bubblegum, I suppose. <laughs> Let's be honest. Most of those Scorpions album covers, other than like Blackout, are yeah. pretty weird, and they some are, of them are just yeah. really bad. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he looks like, like that. Dan on the first glance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's next? That's a good choice, by the way. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Ryan, okay, I guess. I, I'm, I'm going next? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Chris, you're right. next. Yeah. yeah, actually, the Scorpions just, uh, for the first time in a long time, that, that I remember, officially did uh, a Love Drive t-shirt with that artwork. But I was really bummed because they didn't have it in my size. Otherwise, Nick, I was totally buying that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this one would probably be controversial pick in uh, in this group because I know uh, half of us really don't like Pantera. Uh, Pete, I, I don't think you, Pete minds them. I don't. I don't mind them. I, I mean, like them. I don't, yeah. I don't hate them. I don't love them. They're not one of my favorite bands, but I like them. I mean, I've probably seen them a dozen times. I got every record, but man, this album cover, and, and you know, me and a buddy, my buddy Sean, were talking the other day, and it's like, okay, you know, like you can. We can, we can make fun of, like, you know, uh, Black Sabbath sabotage and whatever, because the 70s, well, that was the 70s. But, you know, by the, by the 80s and then into the 90s and further on, like, fans knew this was going to be, the image was going to help sell records, and you got to put this image on the T-shirt. I mean, what the fuck uh, I can is put, this? I can be that one. Good choice. I mean, it's, a, it's a bonfire with some drunk dude with a bottle of whiskey jumping through the flames, but they had to censor the whiskey with like the worst Hold Photoshop. it up closer. Hold it up closer, worst Chris. Photoshop ever. <laughs> this is, if, if you don't know it, this is Reinventing the Steel, which is the last ever Pantera record from 2000. It's not a terrible record. Not their best, 
I don't That's hate good. it. I, I like it. I like the record. But I remember when I heard the record was coming out called Reinventing the Steel, like I automatically thought of British Steel. So I thought oh, man, maybe they'd have like some kind of razor blade connection or something. Well, anything would have been better than, than this. This is ridiculous. Uh, like, like how did nobody, I mean, we're talking Pantera, a band that was an arena band, sold millions of records, tons of concert tickets. How did nobody in the Pantera organization be like, guys, this is not a good idea. Like, but it didn't matter. They still sold, you know, million records, probably came yep. in the top 10. So, you know, hey, it's I bought it still. It's probably, it's, probably it's, probably success. it's probably that very success that leads to maybe a little bit of, they don't, maybe they're not trying or thinking about it as much because they know they're, you know, on top of the world. I don't know. Could it have sold a lot. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Could good choice. <laughs> it is a bad one. Good album, though. I, I like that yeah, album. I like, I like it. It's not terrible. Yeah. All right, Ryan, what do you got? All right, so kind of my cover, my uh, my choices are all metal albums this time, and uh, I was thinking a lot of those eight albums that are real good, and the artwork was kind of, I want to say amateurish. You know, it's it wasn't necessarily terrible, but it was kind of like, eh, maybe that's the best you could have done, like something that was like on a doodle on a high school notebook. So this time I got Demolition Hammer, and the album is Tortured Existence. Hmm. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it, I mean, it reminds me of the scene in Robocop when the guy falls into the toxic waste and he gets not, you know, turned yeah. into mush. But, uh, other than that, I don't, like, I don't know. It's just like a real, like, kind of shitty looking, like, mutant zombie with some flames going on. Yeah. It's really amateurish. It's almost like the Toxic Avenger. It looks like Toxic. Yeah. It's got a little of that. It just looks like the guy, like, I don't, I don't know. I could never, uh, the album's amazing. It's, such, it's a really, really good, uh, thrash album from uh you know the late 80s there i think early 90s but uh that cover i don't know it's not very good no yeah. amateurish yeah and the music's yeah. not like you said the music <laughs> doesn't fit yeah all right i got a two for one here because it's the same band it's the only two albums they're released both are hypnosis <laughs> album covers so we're going way back here this is like what 1970 and 71 the band is called toe fat all raise your hand who've never heard of that band before British kind of bluesy rock band. Ken Hensley from Uriah Heep was in this band. Oh, okay. Or Uriah Heep. I've heard of him. So wait till you see these album covers. They're absolutely awful. Okay, so this is the, the self-titled debut. Ooh. Is that a thumb? <laughs> yes, the thumb, their heads right? are all and faces are all thumbs. Wow. All right. But wait, it gets That's better. the first this, thing I thought of, but I didn't want to say. This is their second album, just called Two. I haven't a clue what it is. But it's better than the first one. Some it kind is of a little better. Decayed yeah, meat and bones and insects and yeah. That's weird. Looks yes. like a mermaid that Salvador Dali thought of, but yeah, not no. not good. So you put them both together and uh, yeah, yeah. Terrible. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty bad. Really good <laughs> albums though. Really good bluesy hard rock stuff from the early seventies. And if you mm. the, the Ken Hensley connection is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, toe fat. Not a good name either. I was going to say, say, who thought that a band like Toe Fat would have lousy album covers? I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, Nick, back to you. Also obscurity. So, so my, so my next choice. Um, sometimes bands become victim to the fact that they had such great album covers beforehand uh, that it can worsen something that maybe on its own isn't that bad. But I have to go with. Um, we all, uh, I think most of us here like Morbid Angel. Um, but right around the end of their uh, really good classic era, they put out Formula's Fatal to the Flesh. And I was looking over, thinking about this video, and I, I looked at this album cover, and I said, you know what? I hate this. <laughs> um, I can't stand They just wrote the letters. Am I supposed to read that across? Is it acronyms? It's terrible on the eye. What is going on with this orange? It looks like the... the Monster and Bugs Bunny, you know, monsters have such interesting haircuts. The old, yeah, the old Gossamer. Right? It looks like what's yeah, the Gossamer. Name? Gossamer, thank you. It looks like <laughs> Gossamer. I don't. It's just badly drawn. All the good stuff is hidden away down there. Um, it really just did not. You know, they had some really classic album covers. Oh yeah. And, uh, I think that's really, 
abomination was what like just like an ugly purple green yeah uh, like a pentagram on a field of like weird you don't know if it's snow or what, right. what it is well, yeah least it was bad of course and weird. their first few were very good yeah Still but that one cover. yeah that one to me was just uh real it looked it felt rushed it, it, you know, it, and it, the album to me feels a little rushed. It's not one of my favorite albums. It is still good, but I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's still a good album. But uh, that that cover, yeah. <laughs> it always reminded me of a of a Jack in the Box. Yeah, that's what it, yeah, Jack in the Box. You know, like <laughs> some kid did the thing, and it, it just the the fire thing just popped out. But yeah, I don't like that record, and I hate that album cover. That's a great yeah, album. yeah, really terrible, and just really didn't even age well at all. So that's my choice. All right. Chris, what do you got? All right. Uh, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure lots of people hate this guy, and I, I hate him now, but I used to I used to love him, and then – well, I don't really hate him now, but I, I, I used to love him, and then he kept putting out like a million records, and I just stopped following him. But, you know, sometimes albums just kind of catch you. And um, mm-hmm. Ingbe Momstein was working with Cozy Powell, so I got this record called Facing the Animal, and I absolutely love this record. I mean, the other day I put it on for the first time in a while, Listen to it like three times in one night. It's great. Like, Jesus, this album is fucking amazing. Um, but this cover sucks. I mean, it's just a close-up on his face. And yeah, I had Ingve sign it because it's my favorite Ingve record uh, when I interviewed him. But this cover is shit. I mean, That's Kenny G. That's Kenny G. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> facing the animal, it, it should have had a tiger or a bear or... Uh, leopard something they reissued it later on with a better cover which had like uh lions and stuff but um i still love this record but man that album cover sucks although uh this is a bonus one when i went through the ingve pile to find uh this album cover uh, i was like oh god yeah as bad as the facing the album cover facing the animal cover is um it's not as bad as this one which is perpetual flame and uh god this is terrible yeah. I mean, at, at least he's holding a guitar but wow Ingve is just on fire? yeah oh man he burned his hands up doing that yeah it's just it's just not good so Ingve yeah. uh, needed to stop putting himself on every single album cover because we know who you are that. dude you yeah. know who you are. It's like enough already. Well, the, the last time I saw him was at the Chance, and it was horrendous. Oh, was that the show where he so, showed up by himself? Yeah, by himself. He because he got rid of his singer, so now he does some vocals, and he's got a keyboard player off stage that does some vocals. Terrible. I could save that for part three of bad concert experiences. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, he, you would think after forty years, his ego would not be that big. But it's only gotten worse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still love him, though. <laughs> yeah, no, he's still he's still talented. Listen, I can't even pick up a guitar properly, let alone you know play a note. So I'm not one to talk. But yeah, that's it. Those are terrible album covers. Yeah, good choices. All right, Ryan, what do you got? All right, so uh, this is a band. I went through my collection. I have all their albums. I don't think they have a single really good album cover, even though I like pretty much everything they've done. But the band is Cradle of Filth, and the album is the 2000 album, Midian, Midian. which I think it's one of the first ones they did with, like, digital photography. Mm. And it, it, it looks like uh, like Baby's first Photoshop here. Like, this guy in particular, I just don't understand what is what is happening with this character, you know? And you got the, you know, obviously the demon, it's pretty generic otherwise, but... It's for a band that's never really had like a, a run of good covers like anywhere in their career. That one is just a, kind of an eyesore. But the album's pretty good. So I think that album's pretty I, epic sounding for them, and and should have yeah. had a great album cover. Yeah. Should have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I like that album too. Yeah, that's a shitty cover. Right. And it's I all would, this purple mush. Yeah, it's all this fucking purple everywhere. So you know, but I it's would definitely say that, a, or a good album. I would say that Dusk and Her Embrace is a very good album cover. I think, personally. That and uh, Cruelty, I think, are probably like the best two. Yeah. But I, 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 it's something I'd want to wear on a t-shirt, you know, even their infamous t-shirt from years ago. But, yeah, they never <laughs> had a want to, like, you know, I want to wear this. But right. that one, uh, yeah, ugly. Mm. Agreed. All right. I love this band. I really like this album. It's not one of their best albums, but I really like it. But this is, like, one of the worst album covers 
of any hard rock band of the 70s. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's horrible. It, yeah. It's 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 horrible. You know, I mean, come on, guys. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> it's, that's either really bad or really good, depending how you. I mean, well, they wanted to look really good, obviously, but uh, man, uh, they rough. tried. They did their uh, best. Come on, marking the cut and the guys, you could do better than that. Good album, think, though. I was going to say, whatever yeah. version of Grand Funk is, is on the road right now, they should totally be selling that T-shirt. Exactly. <laughs> like exactly. They the don't look anything thing. like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Nick, back to you. All right, so, um, okay, this next one is a decent album. It's a good, pretty good album, but, sorry, I think they really, um, this is an artist who I think you'll agree has had some very striking, very uh, interesting album covers. And I think with this one, um, Ozzy Osbourne, I don't know what he was thinking with Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Like That's this. a terrible cover. Yep. Those I, are teeth and eyes. And, oh, I, I, I can just see him them asking him when he's like high as a kite. Like, what do you think would be good for this? And, oh, just put some teeth and eyes over this guy's body. I mean, it's boring and, and just so like, even, even the logo. I mean, it's just boring, dismal, and unengaging. Um, and kind of like, you know, yeah, kind of like that record. Yeah, that album kind of sucks. It's a bit. Not, oh. yeah, it's not the best Ozzy record, but I mean, I'm picking it just because Ozzy. I listen when I was a young lad of ten, and I was pouring through my older brother's uh, albums, and I found like Blizzard of Oz and um, Diary of a Madman and Ultimate Sin. These things terrified me, but I loved them. I had to look inside. I had to listen to them. I thought Ozzy wasn't even human. You know, there nothing can beat those experiences. And if That's that cool. was the album that I had seen as a child, I would have just kept on going. You know, I would have felt I was at the dentist's office or something silly. So, you know, when you make good classic album covers and then you you switch to that stuff, I don't I don't know why they do it, but that's my pick. Yeah. Yeah. It always it always meant made me think that Ozzy's wearing a sweater and somebody hung <laughs> Christmas ornaments off his sweater. Yeah, really macabre <laughs> Christmas ornaments. <laughs> Oh, all right, so this is me. All right, yep. right. Uh, I'm up. Uh, yes, sir. All right, yeah. This band, a uh, couple album covers came up uh, the last time, and it's my all-time favorite band. It's the band that changed my life. But man, they have some terrible album covers, and I really liked this record. Uh, I still do, but uh, not their greatest, but not their worst. But man, this cover is terrible. This is the 1990 album from the Tony Martin-led version of Sabbath. This is Tear. And, it's a great uh, album. A really solid record. You know, this record was based on a lot of Norse mythology. You know, Headless Cross was the dark demons and, and Satan, and they wanted to go uh, in another direction for this record, which is totally cool. But why isn't there, why isn't like an Amon Amarth cover with like Vikings and ships and so, like, what, what is this? It, it's, you know, Clouds? Well, it's pretty boring. I like it. Okay. I mean, I've never <laughs> seen it on a t-shirt because you can't really reproduce it well. And, it uh, like it's safe to say the, the record label had no budget for that album cover. That's true, yeah. too. They probably spent it all it. on the production of the album. I, IRS Records was like, listen, this thing's <laughs> not going to sell anyway. Just put it, just put it out. <laughs> and it's true. It didn't sell for shit. But maybe it was sold better with a better cover. Who knows? Probably not. And, you know, to, to Nick's defense, uh, you know, there are if – you, if you hold that up again – it's got the basis of what could have been an album, yeah, yeah, album the, cover, but it's missing. Is, it's missing something, right? Yeah, it's just like the outside yeah. is great, and even like the the back is not terrible, but I don't know. I just, uh, it, I just to me, it's just underwhelming. It does. You know what? It doesn't scream Black Sabbath. Yes. No. No. You're probably no, right. You're probably had a budget. It's my like favorite. Like, Cross album. was more of a classic Sabbath album cover, and you know, this was this was a bummer. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. Well, I mean, we could talk all night about how Sabbath had a lot of crappy album covers, right? That's true, for sure. Because <laughs> they did. Because <laughs> they did. Love, love them. Love them or hate them. They had yep. some crappy covers. Yep. All right, Ryan, back to you. All right, so this is uh, going back to thrash metal here. So this is a band. I like their earlier covers. They're not, they're not really uh, the best art, but I like them. They're kind of iconic. But the band is Razor. And oh, sure. 
first one with uh, their second vocalist, Bob Reed. Yeah. And this is just, it, it's like very, it's like they drew this in five minutes, this, uh, this cover. Shotgun Justice is the album. Uh, the, the album is ridiculous. It's like one of the most violent things they ever did. I love it. Like, it's not as good, good as the couple, first couple albums. It's not Evil Invaders. It's not Violent Restitution or any of that stuff. Uh, I think it's a great, super brutal. It's like getting hit in the face with a brick for like 35, 40 minutes, just relentlessly. You know, you just walk outside and there's just some dude just, you know, starts pummeling on you, which for a thrash out, that's, that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of feel you want to have, you know, you don't want well, like lullabies and soft, you know, melodies and stuff. So great album, shit art. And uh, a couple of years ago, I think Relapse reissued it and they kind of guskied it up a little bit. So the reissue is a little better, but the original is just, ugh. Yeah, that's real amateurish looking. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That is. That that looks like somebody in the band hired their like eleven year old brother to to draw. Mm. And like yeah. if you watch Terminator, <laughs> yeah. right? Or or he read Marvel yeah. comics and he liked Deathlock, so he's yeah. like, oh, let me draw a carbon <laughs> copy of that, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I never knew what to think about this one. I love this band. So this is a great German heavy rock band from the seventies. Some people also call them Kraut Rock. But this album cover just doesn't make any sense to me. It's kind of shocking and just like. Uh, the band is called Birth Control. The album is called Operation. Wow. So you have some kind of giant bug creature eating little babies. And then if you oh, open no. it up, there's like an image of the of the Pope in the back. All right? Like kinda what cool. is, uh, It's kind of cool, cool, but it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And then the inside is this. Like, what? Wow. What is That's it? Very 70s. That is so 70s. Totally. I mean, the album is great, though. I mean, if you love like heavy Hammond organ and crunchy guitar, riffs all over the place, wailing vocals, it, it totally rocks. But I'm just like, what in the world is it? Is it, it? Yeah, it's a little cool, but it's just kind of really yeah. weird and almost like wrong, right? You know, if it's like. Mm -hmm. I think I want to hear the album now, though. Oh, uh, yeah. you should hear the album. It's really yeah, good. This, this band that. is great. Yeah. Birth, Birth Control. Cool. Yeah. Operation is the name of it. Very good. We got some time. Anybody right. got any other ones? What's that? Otherwise, otherwise I, I, did we get through everybody? Did we get through no, all those picks? We got, I got no, two I have more. a couple more. Cool. Oh, I'll keep going. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, so I hate to pick on my favorite band that changed my life forever, but we're going to most like, mostly because the, the previous discography was amazing artwork. And just as the quality began to slip with the music, the quality also slipped with the art. No prayer for the dying. Um, I still like the album. I, I do. I enjoy a lot of songs on it. Um, so it's cool. It's been, the the is probably one of the best parts about that album. Yeah, uh, no, this right here. What, what is yeah, this? that's terrible. What is that? Um, yeah. and, and apparently it got cut out. I think on the, on the wishes of the Eddie band, looks great though. Band. I mean, come on, you got to say Eddie looks. No, great. I was going to say that Eddie looks awesome in it. Eddie looks awesome in it. But I was looking at and I was thinking about the Seventh Sun artwork, and you know when I got into this all, I was very young and it was all already out, so I was just you know getting into it at the same time. But if I had gotten Seventh Sun, and then I was waiting for the next album, and that was the the cover, I would have been let down just personally. So I, I think it was not their best. You're right though. Eddie looks great, but the guy, what he should have been done is he should have been kicking the ass of like another monster or something. Not some weird looking purple guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the man. Yeah. And they got rid of it in later, um, in later, uh, did they really, I don't think I ever noticed oh, that. Yeah. yeah I, I, didn't I was researching it and I, I didn't realize that cause I have the, you know, an older one, but apparently there was a, um, uh, I should have researched that, my bad. But if you look it up, they did, uh, on a complaint of the band and the management, they decided to to omit that guy. Um, huh. Yeah, so. Good for them. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right, Chris. Yeah, that's got? a good one. All right, well, my pick, again, not in my favorite band, but, you know, when it's a band you love, to me, that there's no one more uh, qualified because, you know, you, you love the band, and I hate I hate people who are, who are so – so so blindly in love with the band, but this is a terrible cover. But regardless, I still bought this album six times. I got the vinyl, the cassette, the Canadian cassette, and then CDs of Black Sabbath, Seven Star, also featuring Tony Iommi. Let's put his name in the front. 
because he's on drugs and wants to get out there more. He's mad at Ozzy. But um, it's a terrible cover. I mean, the, the whole the whole thing is just like, why? It was supposed like, to be a solo album, wasn't it? I always thought that was a yes. solo album, and the label like said, oh, it, "We'll make some more money by shoehorning Sabbath." Correct. I mean, that's that's the story, and you know, maybe it's true, and there was, you know, we'll never know the truth, but there's you know, lot, lots of talk that the compromise was Tony, let's put it out as Black Sabbath featuring Tony Omi. We'll put your name up there big, and we'll put we'll put a picture of you. But it's like, guys, either it's a Black Sabbath record or it's not. And if you're selling it as Black Sabbath. Uh, a picture of Tony with his teased up hair in the desert. Uh, I hate it. I, and meanwhile, Glenn Hughes, as high as he was on drugs during that whole period, was horrified that he was actually on a Black Sabbath album because he thought it was just, he, I was just singing a couple songs on a Tony Iommi solo album. Holy crap, now I'm the front man for Black Sabbath? What happened just, here, right? I was just going to say, yeah, even worse. Now we're going on the road with Black Sabbath and you got you no know, play bass, so you got nothing to do with your hands. So. Yeah. But, but yeah, so that's my pick. Terrible cover. Got Terrible. It. Ryan, back to you. All right, so I want to, uh, just like Chris, I'm going to pick out one of my favorite bands here, although uh, I might be the only one that likes this album. I'm going to go to bat for it. But uh, so I have very, one specific complaint about this. I don't think the cover sucks, but the album is Man is Judas Priest, and the album is Jugulator, which I like. <laughs> um, my problem with this album is that I, I had to get the actual CD out here. Uh, this is like blurry as hell. Like, I don't know if it's, you can really tell on uh, on the you know on the phone here through the uh, camera, but uh, like the actual image, it's like heavily pixelated and like really blurry, and it just looks like they didn't like size it right. I, I don't know what the hell happened, but uh, they had like a five dollar budget for it. That's what that. Oh yeah, <laughs> it probably was too. I know, and if I'm the only one that likes that album, you know. No, no, I, I love was, that. I, I really like that record, Cathedral Spires. I, that, that man is. Great, and I like the title track. Mm -hmm. So I, I love it, and that I, yeah. the first time I saw that, I'm like, did they, I don't know if they fucked up at the printing press, but you know, I I've never been able to find it on vinyl to get like a bigger cover because I apparently they don't want to reissue it either. You know, that's their business. Oh, but, forget uh, it now. Yeah, yeah, not gonna happen. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's not a bad image. You know, it's kind of a classic like painkillerish thing, but it's all just blurry and shitty. So I don't know what happened, but yeah, but, that's uh, a good, that's a good pick. Good, good choice. Good pick. Sure. All right, I think this is like a uh, iconic bad album cover. Great album, one and done supergroup from the late '60s. Yes, <laughs> I thought of that one. Holy shit! Yeah, I forgot all about that one. I mean, it, I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, like the fact that they even released this like this is well, just like almost like embarrassing. It's just like. Well, what's a shocker to me is that Virgin Killer is, is you know, long gone and banned, but that is still readily available. And it's all millions. Right. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? What's the difference? None. Yeah. That I could. <laughs> and it's almost like they stole the plane from the first Wishbone Ash album for this. But it was oh, yeah. hypnosis, so, you know, probably they just reused some props. The, yeah, the prop was probably lying around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Blind Faith. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great one. Back to you, Nick. So, um, yes, this one might cause a stir. But um, I know it's supposed to be like, you know, really good albums. I can't say this is a really good album, but I, I can't. Again, another band that changed my life. Um, they changed my life again when they made this album. But we're going to go with the, it just looks like a black square. Oh. But it's the Black Album by Metallica. Um, I did not like the cover when it came out and I was young. I just, it just seemed so silly to me that they would do this. Um, they had some phenomenal covers, uh, you know, basically three great covers in a row, I think with ride the lightning puppets and uh, justice. And then when you read that Lars Ulrich thought of this, because of course he did. Um, and he said, you know, I was, I, I just read something recently with him where he, he was saying uh, back then that, he was looking at uh, all these metal albums. And he said they all had the same crap on them with like swords and blood and blah, blah, blah. And he said, we want to do something as far from that as possible. Hey, that's well, cool. You didn't just succeed with the album art. You did that with the album as well. But um, yeah, I just, I just think that's trash to me. That's a cop out. I mean, come on. They, I, 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 maybe I'm alone. Maybe people will disagree with me. That's fine. That's what this is all about. I think it's garbage. 
and uh, yeah, just hate another hate hair on the too. Yeah, I did What's too. I, yeah, I, I hate it. I so dug the album a lot when it came out. I can't say I listened to it anymore, but I loved yeah. the album. But I was like, man, this album cover blows. How yeah, cheap could yeah. they have gone here, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah just come on. What are you doing to me here? Yeah. You know, the, yeah. I mean, the Injustice for All album I used to look at as a child. Like, oh, man, I thought it was the Star Wars Yeah. Yeah. So, I, the Kill em all I like the Kill Em All cover. Yeah. I think the Kill Em All artwork is great. Cool. It's definitely very cool. Yeah, without a doubt. Metal yeah. up your ass even better. <laughs> Which they weren't allowed to do. All right, I'll make this one real quick because we're running out of time. Uh, we talked a, a little bit about the Scorpions, and uh, man, they you know they have some some great or some terrible album covers depending uh, on your point of view. Uh, but I said last video that I always think it's a huge huge mistake to uh, put a, a photo of your band on the cover. Uh, cover nothing dates your album um, even you know faster than that. And considering uh, this greatest hits album came out in 1982. Um, this is not the, uh, the Scorpion's best look. This is a hot and heavy cover like with uh, Scor Scorpion's, uh, not, not really the greatest look for them. I mean, even by 1982 standards, they look nothing like this. Uh, Klaus had a lot less hair, and but they, at least they, they dressed a little more uh, hip, I guess, so. Well, they look like a bunch of misplaced hippies is what they look yeah. like. Yeah, I was going to say hippies or gypsies or, I don't know, man. It was just. And if I, I remember correctly, like, that's a great collection, too. I mean, there's oh, tons no, for of sure. great songs I mean, uh, He's a Woman, She's a Man, Speedy's Coming, Dark Lady, Catcher Train, Steam Rock Fever. I mean, just, you know, that early John Ross stuff to me is amazing. Yeah. It's the best in my opinion. I love that, that era. Of the oh, me too. Yeah, my favorite. I mean, I love the 80s stuff, but then later – in the probably the 90s when i got into the early 70s i was like oh my god this stuff is just uh, so it's so freaking heavy yeah yeah great stuff so that yeah that's my those are my picks cool. ryan what do you got all right so last time i had that sodom cover so this time i'm also going for the best save the best for last <laughs> so they uh a swiss band pretty obscure uh mostly known cover i think uh, and this is right at the time when thrash metal and death metal was kind of merging together. So this is like a really heavy thrash album with a little bit of death metal, more in the guitars and the vocals. But you would never know that by looking at the cover. The band is Messiah, and the album is called Extreme Cold Weather. Yes, I go. just I just saw that album cover the other day. <laughs> Look at that guy just hanging out, just hanging out. Here. So when you I mean, see, I love that, polar bears logo, though. The, the logo is metal, but uh, you see this, yeah. you're like, well, that, that's like a, a thrash or death metal right, right there, you know? What a what a great cover. <laughs> Makes me think of that World Wildlife Fund. Yeah. If you I saw that on a t-shirt, I would buy that on a t-shirt, no questions asked, immediately. <laughs> like, without question. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a real uh, eye-catching piece. So, oh, yeah. yeah I mean, the polar bear is great. And it's like, but he's not, the polar bear's not metal. And it's like, I don't really look at that and think, okay, freezing cold, right? Uh, you know, right. we know polar yeah. bears live in the cold. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the polar bear was like, you know, like killing a seal or like had blood, you know, like doing something that polar bears do. And it was more metal. That'd be fine. But he's just kind of strolling on the ice, you know, just lumbering around, you know, like kind of lackadaisical carefree. But for whatever <laughs> reason, I, I tried to look up why they went with that one. And I, I couldn't find any good, uh, backstory behind it other than just a cool cover or bad cool cover right that's a good one uh, all right i'm wondering if mine here might be the worst we've seen today or not i don't know we'll let the viewers vote but this one is this is just god awful and it's a great band so i've been listening to this band a lot lately the band's called rare earth okay good cool 70s kind of hard rock soul band uh -huh. they're, they're on moat they're like one of the only few uh, white bands on motown records and all that kind of stuff um, this is their, God, what year does this come out? 70 or 72, something like that. It's called Ma. You get what? Let me, I should probably take it out of the U.S. Ma! Wow. Oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's like the Sodom one. <laughs> yeah, that's something. That, is, yeah, that, might, that might win it. That's an excellent pick. I mean, you know, if, if you're going to like try to get people to not buy your album, you, you put a cover like that on there, right? Oof. Wow. And it's a great <laughs> album. It's a really, really good album. But I don't know, you know, I don't know. Good covers are important. And especially back in the day, that's all you had was standing hey. in a record shop looking at that. That was your decision right there, you yep. know, if you didn't know anything about the label or anything. 
That's you true. Know. Like now you see a cover, you can like bring up your phone, bring up YouTube, whatever. Like, what's it sound like? Oh, yeah, play exactly. it store, like within two minutes. But yeah, you couldn't yeah. do that. For, you know, most of a uh, you know most of history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess we've run out of time, so I'm going to leave everybody with a parting shot. Goat's Head Soup by the Rolling Stones. What the <laughs> hell is that? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is on the web. <laughs> That's a great album. I love it. But Jesus, it is. What, is that, what does that picture have? What does this have to do with Goat's oh, Head yeah. Soup? I mean, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. This foursome is coming back, uh, I guess, in a week. And uh, we're going to do a part three of this at some point. But I think before we do a part three, we're going to do how about albums you bought that had great covers. And then you got home and you listened to them. And you're like, this sucks. Many of those. That's yeah, our assignment for next time. So uh, looking forward to seeing everybody again. For Ryan Scow, Chris Allo, Nick Franco, I am Pete Park.